Hello everyone, and welcome to another War Leader PvMP video. Today I've got various fights against various classes to show you, and uh, it's going to be a little bit of a mixed bag, but I'll have a little bit to say about much everything to be seen. So let's go ahead and get started with the little Rank War Leader, who starts out right out front of TR, and I've got a Rank 4 Warden in my sights. Now this is mostly just because I'm kind of desperate to get a fight of some kind, and I feel like trying to provoke the warden would be an interesting video, if nothing else. I don't think it's a wise idea, I just think it's going to be interesting. So I navigated my way through the NPCs, I whacked him, and he finally noticed, hey, there's something out there, and turned around. And um, now he's just kind of sitting there, okay, so he's finally coming, and he's going to want to be doing his wonderful little ambush and that stuff, but I'm out of combat, so I'm moving nice and quick, and just waiting for the yeah, intimidating shot, there we go, resisted, but still put him in combat so we didn't get a knockdown, and it is gave me a decent start. Now, the one thing that I, I messed up there was I should have hit Banner of Terror while I was still out of combat, because I do not have lead the charge, I'm only rank 4, I don't even have all 6 of my slots or class traits filled up. But I didn't, and so no Banner of Terror bonus for me. Of course, that would have only affected the first two minutes anyway, but still, it would have been really handy to have. Now, the thing that becomes apparent very quickly is Circus is a Shield Warden. He is fully blue line, and he plays like a turtle. Which, I can't entirely fault that behavior. I do plenty of turtling myself on the War Leader, but, uh, Warden Turtles are just, well, uh, how do we put this? Just recently I, I saw a, a Warden Turtling, I was fighting him, and between a rank 12 Warg, a, a decently ranked Spider, myself, and another Spider, we could not kill this guy. We had other freaks showing up, we were putting them down, and we would go back to this guy, and we could not put this guy down because he was just... So, a, a turtle. <laughs> and it wasn't until two more wargs eventually showed up that we finally managed to kill the stupid thing. And that's what turtling wardens do. They just uh, last so long that it's, it's ridiculous. They take massive numbers of monsters, or at least massive numbers of a good number of high ranks, if they are fully shield traded and very uh, keen on their turtling, and they're able to survive and just keep going even though they're not playing very well. I mean, this guy, he's giving up his back all the time, he's barely doing any damage, and it's it's just kind of disgusting because even with him not doing a good job of actually managing where his character is standing and things like that, he just gets away with everything because of all the tools that a shield warden has. Now, at the same time, because he's turtling, he's letting himself fight a rank 4 war leader and accomplish nothing. And that's something that, back on Ogmog, that never happens. Fighting a warden, and granted that was back in Moria, they couldn't do the kind of ridiculousness that they can against other players nowadays. But if you fought a warden, they would actually attack and be aggressive and do damage to you and you would get killed because you couldn't heal. It was actually, you know, dangerous. There was actual combat involved, things like that. Uh, not like this. And uh, I, I realize very rapidly here that this is going to go nowhere. And so I decide to actually walk this guy away. And once I start getting closer to t the uh, TR hotspot, I end up going ahead and calling him out just because he doesn't back off me. And at that point, you know, reinforcements arrive and he ends up getting killed and then as the kicker TR auto flips behind him just because I pulled him so far away from the entire thing but that's just because he wasn't aggressive he didn't really attack and when, even when he steps into recklessness stance which I didn't get to record because you can already see that I, there's uh, some frame rate issues going on and I turn off the recording soon it, it still is nothing but the same for the next fight, uh, you know those nice little pictures I've had, all those moons with this crazy moon? Well, right after I took those, I jumped down from the rock where I was taking them, and this is what happens. Minstrel and a champion versus my rank 10 warrior. 
and uh, because I was taking pictures and stuff, I've got defensive aura on, and uh, I'm really not ready to actually go, go into combat. Uh, go ahead and deploy all my banners and everything, and uh, I did put down command post. And now I've gone ahead and I've turned my attention to the champion. I started out on the minstrel, wasn't really going where. I, I do decide to go ahead and attack the champion. He's 85, but he's unranked. So, you know, the chances of him having Audacity Gale are basically nil, and that's proven by the amount of damage I'm putting on him. And now here, this is just the fault of the Minstrel. I am killing this champion, and the Minstrel does nothing. And there, the champion's dead, and what should have been an easy 2v1, well, except that I could run to TR if I really need to, it has just turned into me killing one, and now me versus the Minstrel. So... Shame on you, minstrels, that stay in your speech the entire time and let your allies go down like that. That is just... no. That is not kosher. He, he didn't even throw Lay of the Hammer Hand at, at the poor little champ. He just let him die. And it's not like it was difficult to see what I was doing or anything. So now Galanath is going to be wandering around doing his little kite minstrel tricks that he thinks are tricky. And... The one thing I'm not doing very well is I'm not doing a good job of removing that debuff. I should hit my pot right now and pull it off. Uh, okay, actually I did pull, pop it off right there. Uh, the only thing is that that particular debuff does get applied by like three different minstrel skills, so it'll be back up pretty quickly here. But uh, it still is a good idea to just pop it off whenever you can, because you know, the litigation reduction, there's no need to let that sit on you. Uh, I do go ahead and stay in Brawler's stance, and I'm just going to try to put damage on him. Uh, the big goal is I want him to use up a lot of power, and uh, hopefully exceed my power usage, so that I have the chance to actually kill him. And uh, he's putting a ton of stuns out, just you know, continues hammering that, that stun whenever he can, which... You know, the, one of the things with the stun is that one of the primary damage skills in War Speech does have a, a chance to stun when you turn on War Speech and are traded up and all that. So, you know, it, it happens, you can't necessarily control it, but still, you can be a little bit judicious about how often you hit that particular skill. Um, the nice thing is that Galanath does not seem to have a whole ton of audacity. Uh, he's a light armor class as well, so he's not going to mitigate as well as champions and stuff anyway. But uh, this is actually allowing me to put some decent damage onto him, even though the power consumption is pretty high. And there we go, banners are redeployed, so now is a chance to really do damage, but I'm getting my shouts interrupted right in the middle of the animation as I get crits and stuff, and you're going to see that happen quite a bit throughout this. Uh, there we go, I hopped into commander stance, I hit grip, I did one heal, and right back to brawlers, and that was mostly... I did that, got my very nice you know, boosted heal out of that and then went back. And uh, now I should be hitting my potions. I actually used the lesser quality one, so I should have used the higher. And that's actually going to cost me, I believe. Because it, that is, uh, I want to say, two to 400 power that I gave up there for not using the better quality potion. I uh, still continuing on with the burst. Here we go, I get a nice crit, so I'm keeping him slowed down. Uh, he stuns me so it doesn't actually apply, but I hit him again and fortunately the power of fear wasn't consumed, so right back on top of him, hit him with menacing war for the debuff, and stunning him. And I should hit him with a couple shield bashes right here. I uh, didn't get a crit through again, so I <coughs> no reapplication. Uh, get another crit with intimidating shouts so that he slowed once again so I get to stay on him. Put even more damage down. Gets another stun. I uh, don't pot that. Don't really need to. I'm doing all right for the most part. If you don't need to use the pot, I might as well just let it wait for later. And here we go. Get another crit and another shield bash. A couple more. And he's very, very, very low right here. I get stunned once again. Now I pot. I hit him, and he was just about dead. There he is, 700 health. And I tried to hit a skill. It doesn't go off because I didn't have enough power. He was almost dead. If I had hit the better potion and had the power for that extra shield bash just a split second earlier, I could have killed him. If I had black speech uh, damage over time, I would have killed him. If I had been traded for soloing with the damage boost and empowering, I would have killed him. 
So I had him right there, but unfortunately I'm out of power now. And on top of that, I believe in real life at this point, I had to go get the laundry. So now I go ahead and withdraw to TR. And what follows is basically just me making my way back to TR with really no major issues or problems. I, I blow quitters on the way over there just because I can. And there's nothing else really to see. So let's go on to the next fight, which is over here by the new EC at Lugs Crossroads. And I catch Milnor out here, and I'm just going to go ahead and attack. And I see Marshall Ann is right there. I want to let him go by me. And uh, Milnor went up the hill. But he should be coming right back down because he's been staying close to EC on this particular evening. And there goes the entire free raid. But uh, fortunately, they do not spot me. And I managed to just move to the side and, you know, go, out, go after him and <laughs> start a one versus one. Now, Milnor, uh, Milnor is a, a pretty good captain on the server. I had right after the expansion came out, within the first couple of days, he was actually out at level 75 and managing to kill people. Uh, he was wearing full 75 audacity gear, that, so uh, he had 7 audacity. But uh, still pretty impressive considering how most people feel about captains and their 1v1 prowess and such. Uh, and, you know, he had a 10 level disadvantage. But, you know, if there's a cap class I was going to be able to pull it off, uh, captain's a pretty good bet because they're not uh, based as much on getting block parry evade responses and stuff like that. Uh, criticals are nice for them, but uh, criticals aren't all important. Although, really are very, very handy to have for a captain. Whereas some classes that just wouldn't work out as well, like a 75 Warden, not going to work out as well. They really need their avoidances, and the 10 level difference really does not number on having avoidances. So he is using, uh, let's see, Banner of Victory for the extra power, so good on him. So he's not going to have power issues as rapidly as some captains would. He's also very highly buffed up. It looks like he's got coffee, he's got uh, damage boost from destiny points, and uh, those are the only major buffs that I see. Uh, in defense middle earth, obviously, you know, and crit boost from himself, and uh, looks like trail of food, and that's about it. Uh, he also does have some of his uh, defeat responses up from criticals, or possibly he used time of need to get the, that off, particularly the war cry. But uh, nothing too serious aside from that. Now the, the big thing basically is just going to be who runs out of power first. That's how these fights pretty much go. And so the, the big goal is to put enough damage on him to keep him using up power, uh, keep yourself alive, and hope that he runs out first. Uh, be, be sure to apply that Banner of Terror in particular to keep running him blow, because that's going to be a very large part of doing it. Now. The big thing about Milnor is he hits incredibly hard for a captain. I, you can see how well he is doing at actually putting down damage. Now, granted, I am in Brawler's stance and not in Commander's stance. So, if things do get dicey, I will go into the Commander's stance and fight him from there, which is going to be very power efficient and really going to be very difficult for him to, to deal with just because Commanders, War Leaders, uh, Guard captains don't have much in a way of good tools for that. Uh, another nice thing about fighting a captain is they've only got one reliable interrupt, and it's on a one minute cooldown, so if they do manage to interrupt you, then you can basically heal from then on for quite a while without any worries whatsoever because he's used up his interrupt and it, unless they've got the legacy, it's a one minute cooldown, and with the legacy maxed out, it's still 30 seconds, so it's a long time. There we go, I got interrupted, but now, now I've got one minute in which to take advantage of him not having an interrupt available. And I'm really not doing very good at keeping his morale uh, bar pushed to down, but I'm doing alright with keeping his power down, and a lot of that is just the banner of terror. So, the fight's going to be dragged out and it's going to take a while, but continuing at the current pace, I suspect that I will do pretty well with keeping him low. Uh, the big thing is just going to be how often he's able to get power restore from Blade of Elendil, 
and because whenever Blade Blendel doesn't stick, and he's not able to get some power restores off of that, that's going to be what really hurts him in terms of having power. Actually, it's kind of interesting seeing just how level the power bars are going. Uh, I hadn't really noticed that at the time, but we're both actually running out of power at a, a pretty even rate, all things considered, which is kind of amusing to me. Uh, I think that we're at the bottom of the power pool, the war leader does a little bit better, but otherwise, uh, you know, not, not nothing to go in too bad for him. And I am managing to actually put a good amount of damage on him, though, so. <laughs> this should be able to be wrapped up, uh, assuming he doesn't do too much. Uh, looks like he got his power pot. And the freak power pots, well, freak pots in general, they, they get quite a bit more than their creep counterparts. So that's just going to be you know, another setback. But yeah, I'll just keep working at him. Alright, there go the banners once again. Oh, they should be going down. That was Power of Fear. There we go, Banner of Terror and Banner of Horror. Which the Terror Horror combo, I, as I've gotten to use that more and more, I love that combo so much. I'm so glad that Turbine has let us use both banners at the same time because it really is such a great one-two punch to be able to lower the mitigation so you can actually put decent damage down and then also, you know, low, lower their in outgoing damage. Uh, but Battle Scar, who is a rank 4 war leader, has jumped into the fray, and Milnor wisely has chosen to go after Battle Star. Gar. Well, Battle Scar, not Star. <laughs> and so, uh, looks like he's targeting me, trying to get me to... Uh, well, he's trying to figure out what exactly he's going to go on. And at this point, I'm just going to see what, what happens. I decide I'll just drop into Commander Stance. I'll try to keep Battle Scar healed up, but I'm not going to participate any further than that. Just going to see what develops, actually. Which, that's kind of the uh, minor annoyance at being in, at having the 1v1 interrupted, which uh, it would have gone on for quite a while longer yet, so I don't know how it would have ended it ultimately if if he had battle scar had not jumped in when it, actually he's only rank three so it's but at the same time I'm not the kind to step back and just let people die uh, so yeah I, I go ahead and actually invite him now and I'm gonna try to keep him alive I uh, throw ahead get him grip and I'm gonna switch from aura of commands into defensive aura so that it, uh, battle scar is gonna have double aura I'm gonna have double aura I believe I'm going to put down the point defense shortly. And basically, I'm just going to be fighting through Poxy against Battle Scar. And you know, I'll be standing here healing him, keeping him alive. And we'll just see how things go. There we go, command post. No, point defense is down. And things are continuing on. Uh, I'm running a little low on power, though. Uh, there, I gave him imposing presence just because I can. But uh, considering I'm doing nothing but healing, shouldn't, power shouldn't really be an issue. And yeah, I'll, I'll consume a lot because of having to use uh, quit winding a fight, which is pretty power intensive. But otherwise, uh, you can keep this up pretty long. And now I'm going to go ahead and take a few shots at Milnor, just because I've noticed that Milnor is, is not expending a ton of power. He is not going down in morale. Battle Scar is actually trying to run away and not attacking directly. Um, and I decided, you know what, let's just go ahead and try to kill him would be best because uh, Milnor is not going to run back to Elf Camp unless he gets pushed down really hard and uh, takes a lot of damage or, or something like that. So I'm going to have to jump in to make that happen. Uh, unfortunately, I do st need to stay in Commander Stance because otherwise Battle Scar will get trounced. Now, as you see in OOC, Throttle is saying that we lost Lugazad, and uh, very shortly here, the Freep Raid is going to come riding down, and, well, there's a side effect of having you know, Captains and War Leaders, 
at you know fighting, and that is these giant columns of light that go into the sky. They're, they're a very big visual indicator that something is happening, and well, <coughs> they draw everyone like moths to the flame. Unfortunately, since it's the free parade, that means that Battlescar and I are going to get stomped. But, you know, in the meantime, at least we're actually managing to put a dent into Milmore's power bar. Although, he, no, his morale bar, but his power bar is going up again. And, really, the, the mistake I made here is just, I let Battlescar fight him alone for a while, when ideally I should have just stayed on him. It would not have been fair or anything like that, but if I wanted to actually kill him, that would have been what I needed to do. Okay, there we go. Quitters, just for extra power, put Battlescar back up in terms of how much morale he has. And uh, it's kind of interesting to see just how well Milnor is doing with his movements and outmaneuvering Battlescar, actually. Uh, you can see he actually does <coughs> have uh, decent movement and all that stuff. Uh, whereas, if you notice what earlier when we were fighting, he really wasn't getting an advantage on me with the movement. We were pretty much at a draw there. Uh, whereas with Battlescar, you can see how often he manages to get behind him, make attacks at his rear where he can't block and parry, and uh, you see, it's it's very effective. It also keeps Battlescar from actually getting those auto attacks and other things off, and it really is uh, a detrimental <laughs> to being able to to kill him and do damage. Uh, fortunately, he is almost out of power now, but uh, you hear all the sound of the freeps coming, and so. Yep, it's all turned messy. It's also turned very laggy. And finally, Anar Walls, who I just run into, and... Well... <laughs> Hunter versus War Leader in the open. Uh, he had a moment in which to desperate flight, but he didn't take his opportunity. And this is what happens. Which really, I have this just because I need a fight where something else dies. Because the other ones felt like draws, even though I did kill that champion. Yeah. Who doesn't like seeing a hunter get squashed? Really. And uh, the very interesting thing to note here is uh, Hunter with low audacity and all that stuff versus a war leader 44 seconds is how long that took. Anyway. I think that's about all for this time. Uh, hopefully we'll get some more captain fights in the future. Uh, hopefully I'll have a chance to go up against a warden with my war leader because I have not had the opportunity to do that in quite a while. And I'm really curious to see how that would go, especially with someone who's a little lower ranked and stuff. Uh, like, I really wish I had fought Circus with my rank 10 instead of my rank 4. But uh, we'll see if any of that develops. In the meantime, good luck and have fun out there everybody. Ugmog is out.